Right now, the Chinese, for example, are one of the leaders in this technology. Mm. Instead of using circuits of electricity, they use laser beams. Hmm. Laser beams to do the calculation because a photon of light can also spin in different orientations. It's called polarization. How does that work, though, when, when they're using laser beams? Well, when you go to the store and buy a sunglass, chances are it's polarized, meaning that the vibrations can only be in one direction, like this way. Mm. Okay, That's why you buy them for sun, to protect you against sunlight. All the other vibrations are eliminated. So what does that mean? That means light is not just one frequency or one phase. Light can vibrate in all sorts of orientations. Mm. Therefore, you can make a computer, a computer out of them, okay? Anything that's quantum mechanical can, in principle, be made into a computer. Like I said, a flower, a leaf is a quantum computer, okay? There's quantum computations, a leaf, and that's why photosynthesis is possible. That's why life is possible. Life itself is made possible by the quantum principle. If the world were Newtonian, if atoms were billiard balls, billiard balls that bounce against each other, just like Newton would, would envision a billiard game, if light were a billiard game, it would take millions of years for a simple chemical reaction to take place. Mm -hmm. But using quantum mechanics, you can take shortcuts, and that makes life possible. So all chemical processes that involve life, photosynthesis, stuff like that, is made possible by the quantum theory. Do you think that this is quantum would be the largest technical step forward in human history by an exponential rate? Yeah, almost by definition, you'd have computers that are infinitely more powerful than any known existing computer, capable of doing calculations that would take an infinite amount of time on a regular computer that computes on zeros and ones, zeros and ones. Well, the thing I keep thinking about while you're saying all this is where AI plays a role in this as well, because obviously everyone's talking about that right now. AI is something... I looked really closely at in like 2017, 2018, 2019, and I was almost wondering like, well, where is this? Like, because it seemed like they already had a lot of the technology, and now in 2023, it's almost like they're unleashing it through things like ChatGPT, MidJourney, and having it all around us. But the way I understand AI is that it's all machine learning. So it's basically once you code the machines, the AI learns what to do and then can build on top of itself. So if you put quantum with AI, just thinking about this as a layman right away, that to me would almost seem like it could, it could severely accelerate the rate at which AI learns. That's right. AI is basically a software problem. You want more code and uh, you can do more things with robots. They can learn things like that with, with coding. And so it's a software problem. You write the code. Quantum computers are a hardware comp problem. Mm. We're talking about the ability to do more with software. So there's a limitation with these chatbots because these chatbots can lie. They can cheat. You know, I'm a professor, and when we assign a term paper project, what do some students do? They get, go to the web, cobble together existing essays, splice them together, and hand it in as their masterpiece, okay? That is a chatbot. Mm. A chatbot takes existing uh, phrases and essays written by a human, splices them together, and passes it off as your, your article. And so, in other words, are these articles written by chatbots original? Are they human-like and, and can, can surpass human abilities? No. They're like college students cobbling together <laughs> known essays, passing it off as their own. Now, these essays sound human-like. Freaks people out when they read them. Sounds like a human wrote them. That's because a human did write them. Mm. A human wrote everything that there is on these chatbots. All the chatbot did was splice them together, sewed them together to make it look presentable. And they're not original. We're not talking about something that's created out of nothing. But anyway, the relationship between chatbots and quantum computers is chatbots is a question of software, limited by the, the power of your hardware. Quantum computers is hardware. It increases your muscle. It increases your power. And for example, what we need for all this is fact checking. Chatbots will lie. In fact, what they do is they take essays on the web and splice them together. If a teenager, if a teenager wrote nonsense on the web, 
some chatbot will grab that teenager's essay and incorporate that into an answer. Mm -hmm. That's why there's so much garbage coming out with chatbots. So you need a fact checker. But a fact checking is very difficult. It requires lots of computational muscle. And that's where quantum computers could come in. Quantum computers has the computational muscle because it computes on atoms, not on transistors. And use that as a fact checker to make sure that these chatbots don't go off the deep end and say all sorts of nonsense, which of course they do, because there's a lot of nonsense on the web. And all these chatbots do is they take existing essays on the web and splices them together, sounding like a human wrote them, because a human did write them. These are human-generated essays spliced together by a machine. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.